Beloved friends, greetings. We thank the Lord very much because He permits us to be here together on this program of the Word of God, Answers Through the Word of God. It is a program in which we try through the Word of God and only through the Word of God to discern or rather discuss your opinions, your judgments, your disagreements, your questions, your queries or whatever issue occupies your mind through the Word of God. I would like one more time to point out that we would not claim that we know how to interpret the Scriptures. We consider ourselves very small for this and we do not consider ourselves as teachers or masters but we are all disciples of Jesus Christ and with you all we are trying to learn through the Word of God the issues that occupy us all. Today, we will read the email that our beloved friend and brother Emmanuel sent us from Crete. I'm reading. He sent us four questions. I shall read them one by one. Firstly, may God bless you, my brethren, and your program answers through the Word of God. And the question is, have microchips have anything to do, have they got anything to do with the mark of the Antichrist? I'm not sure, of course, but we must um, explain something here. You seem to say, if you're talking about the well-known microchip or something else, but that maybe it has not, nothing to do with the mark of the Antichrist, which is written in the Word of God, that the mark would be um, by force, but the microchip is actually your choice and maybe temporary it's by choice and of course there are other comparisons with the implantation of other devices in the body but of course we cannot compare this with other implants because there's other motives involved however the microchip isn't good or bad really in other words if I hit my leg and I've got um, implants to heal it I don't think then that an implant would be sinful of course, if the Word of God has another opinion. Now, in order, I'd like to ask you something as well. Let's answer first the first question, or try to discuss, rather, the first question, Brother Emmanuel, which refers to one of our previous programs about microchip and whatever other form of chip people are using these days. Placing them in the body of a person for some specific specific demands for example they put microchips in, ho in dogs so they won't lose them they have characteristics ID of a person in a microchip which has the history the medical history of a person or for this case a dog but the truth is um, beloved Emmanuel the Bible talks about a mark and I'd like to read this from inside the Bible Revelation 13 he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads so let's take under account that whatever the Bible says it means referring to the word mark for us Greeks it is something specific I inscribe the right word is on the forehead or on your right hand the word of God says the microchip isn't like a mark that it has something to do that already people are trying well anyway through this technology comes this movement for us humans to have things on our bodies that actually express our identity information about who we are it has got something to do with it but the logic of the mark in the Bible we cannot understand that the microchip has the same meaning as a mark even more so in addition there is another question which is very serious which brings us into wonder the first three and a half years the mark will be just a proposition by the Antichrist in the seven year reign of the Antichrist for the people to put on the mark or not and to bow before his image, worship his icon. 
But the second part of the three of the seven years, the three and a half, the other three and a half years, that the Antichrist will be like a dictator and a false prophet with him. Then he will make force. People will be obligated to put the mark on the foreheads or the right hand. And the obligation part is that they will not be able to buy or sell if they haven't got that mark. But apart from that, there will be people who will not accept this. They will not accept to place this mark on their foreheads or their right hand. Of course, as far as the microchip is concerned, if it is by force, it will be different because they can arrest them, put them to sleep and put it in, implant it by force. This is a mystery. We can't understand it. That a person, though, must accept this and he has to do with worshipping the icon, the image of the Antichrist. We can't understand things well right now. We don't know these things. We are reading what is written. We think but I hope we don't find out about them and hopefully we will leave with the rapture of the church before this calamity comes on all humanity but we cannot completely connect the mark with a microchip or whatever else there might be nor the difference is that one is um, an obligation and the other one is choice the mark will be by choice in the beginning as well but again I repeat a person will not be able to buy or sell without the mark. No other meaning. Not by force. In other words, I will catch you, I will put it on you and that's it. No, you will need to do it on your own free will. That's why many people will not put on the mark and these people will be saved. Because whoever puts the mark on and worships the image, then this person will never have eternal life. He will go straight to hell. So, my beloved Emmanuel, we say what we read, we confess that we don't understand everything, and not only that, and other things through the, the Bible. We don't know everything. That's why we say we are not teachers, we are disciples, students, and we are just listening, looking, discerning, discussing. Hopefully God revealed to us things, but this matter of the mark with the microchip doesn't seem to be the same thing. That it could be the foreshadow of things to come? Maybe, I don't doubt that. But it doesn't seem to be the same thing here. Mark, which will only be upon the right hand or the forehead of a person. And a person can deny it also, not put it on. Even if they arrest you by force, they can't put it on you. It's a mystery. The Bible reveals itself to us by the passing of time. Many times, we many things we don't know yet. And our Lord hasn't hid these things from us. He said to us, what you don't know is double of what you do know. Every time. So, beloved Emmanuel, let's remain in the little things that are written with trust in the truth of the gospel and we will wait to see how God slowly will reveal things to us. Now I'm referring to your second question. When I believed in the Lord I already had a tattoo on my body. I've repented for this. What should I do now? Especially when this tattoo advertises things which are out of the Word of God. Should I try and find a way how the tattoo can come off my body or is this in vain? Should I leave it or not? What would the Lord want? I want it to leave. Brother Emmanuel, the truth is that before we met Christ we have done many things and on our bodies and in our soul and our spirit. But when we called upon the name of Jesus the Lord came and forgave everything. And when we were baptized in the water, we were baptized in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit for the remission of our sins. The tattoo that you have, it wasn't good. But now, and I could say through the Word of God, through the Old Testament, it seems to be a transgression also, iniquity, a sin. But, however, so the only thing you have committed in the past and on your body, and you've sinned with your body and your soul and your spirit. 
but the Lord forgave you. With the blood of Jesus Christ, He cleansed all your sins. So, don't allow this to annoy you. Just see it as a remembrance of your past life, and you will thank God that the Lord freed you from it. Not only from the tattoo and what it inscribed, but also from other things and the other things you did. So, therefore, do not worry. Glorify God. And if now you don't like it aesthetically how it looks and you want to remove it, remove it. But as far as sin is concerned, it's not an issue. Lord Jesus paid your sin on the cross of Calvary. Third question. A cousin of mine has a satanic symbol tattooed on his skin. If he believes in Jesus eventually, how will he be able to glorify Christ with that tattoo on his arm? Is it any importance to God or not? It's the exact same thing, my brother Emmanuel, as I told you. God, of course, doesn't like that, especially because it's a satanic symbol. Or any kind of tattoo, God doesn't like it for a person to mark his or her body. But this was in the time of ignorance. God oversees those. Now He calls people to eternal life through faith in the name of Jesus Christ. So therefore, and for your cousin, there is no such issue. If again it annoys him aesthetically and nothing more, then let him try to remove it because there are ways of removing tattoos these days. But, however, it's got nothing to do with sin and the soul of a person and eternal life. Fourth question. By a fireplace, left and right, I have two eagles carved out of um, stone. Are they idols in my house? And I have devoted my house to the Lord. And the command according to the word of God says, Do not make for yourself idols, do not worship and do not adore them. These are three different commands or is it just one? Is it only an idol if you make it so you can worship it or is it an idol either way? These heads of eagles have got nothing to do with idols, my brother. Yes, they are statues as the um, pictures or paintings that we have in our houses. It becomes an idol when it presents God. Even more so, it says it in the Bible, in the letter to the Romans. Let's see what it says. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. So, the idol or whatever form of icon or statue becomes an idol when the glory of God is apparently expressed through it or thought it is expressed through it. For example, you have a man who's got a nice um, blonde beard and you say, that's Jesus. Or you see an old grandpa who's quite old, you say that is God in a picture. That is an abomination before God. Because no one saw God and lived. No one can know what He looks like. And we have no image of how Christ looked either. God did not permit this. It's not a sin, it's an abomination before God. In other words, God hates idols. He's disgusted by them. But not every statue that presents an eagle or even uh, another person or a painting of a portrait of someone that doesn't make that an idol this is art which God does not object for us to adorn our houses of course it's nicer for you to put verses up on your wall but that has nothing to do with your question of course it's one question and one position if you make things you can worship them, then it's an idol. You make an image, an icon of a corruptible person as an image of the incorruptible of God. And that is a sin. And the Word of God tells us that God sees this an abomination. These are your questions, Brother Emmanuel. We thank God for your email. And we hope that our answers were correct and complete and gave satisfaction to your soul. We shall continue with another question. Dina from Egyo.
can Christians become organ donors? In addition, is cremation permitted by the Word of God instead of burial after death? Now, organ donors. It's truly a question that has occupied many Christians' minds throughout the ages, all over the world. And there are two opinions. And the first opinion is, why not? Since this action gives life to some people, and it's even seen as a good work, and I might even say the work of God, that people who are complete strangers, or even well known, you help them continue their lives with the hope of eternal life and salvation or even the blessings of man. A transplant is when someone loses his kidneys for example and in which the mother in these circumstances gives her kidney. I usually say mother because a mother should have so much love that will do this, sacrifice her own kidney, gives one of her kidneys so her son or daughter can live. Who can say to that that it's not a good thing or even a Christian act? So, in general, people, I'm talking about Christians, how much more unbelievers, they have this opinion, which I cannot say is a mistake. In some circumstances, it's very right, as the example I gave earlier. However, there is another opinion which troubles Christians. It's when, apart from, except for um, specific organs, such as the kidney, transplants are done, whether without someone's life being taken away, when he or she gives one of the two they have, or when a person is dead, as is um, eye transplants usually. But in general, organ transplants um, take place when a person is alive, ready to die, yes, but he is alive or she is alive, which means that since you are taking organs from a living person, consequently killing him in the process, many Christians have a problem with their conscience in this because they cannot accept the premature death of a person. Because there is always hope that Christ can heal this person and even resurrect him or her. But apart from this, for you to provoke a death of someone to receive their organs, even if you see that they are ready to die, there there is a problem of a con of, in the conscience of a Christian, and that is correct also. For me, both opinions are correct. And it's more biblical, actually, the second opinion. It's more according to the Word of God. No one has a right to... Um, take a life of any person in any circumstance or situation. Of course, the answer, doctors who talk about death, in other words, the person's dead, but we are just keeping him alive through um, technology and equipment. Now, beloved Dina, I told you the, both opinions on this. I don't know if you care about my opinion. I will not refer to my opinion, what I think. Pray, judge, think about it, and decide. Through the Word of God. Command. Clear we don't have about this, apart from the fact that from a living person we not take life from. Of course we said that there are the opinions of doctors that this person is already clinically dead. But what does that mean? It means that there's no life in him. Of course, the Bible describes us who is dead. 
saying to us that when faith has no works, then it's dead as a body that has no spirit is dead. So, when there's no spirit in a person, the body of a person, then this person is thought of being as dead. Very, very fine lines. I cannot add anything to that. It's a question which occupies all Christians throughout all humanity. This is what I know, what I've heard. I don't know if there are any other opinions or views on this. If there are other opinions or views on this, I'd really like to hear them. So whoever's listening, viewing us today, I would really like to hear your views because it's something that a lot of people are dealing with. Now, beloved Dina, let's come to your second question, which you refer to, is cremation permitted after death? The truth is, after death, beloved Dina, there's no meaning of what will happen to the body of a person, in other words, a person's flesh. If a person dies at sea, the fish eat him. If he dies in the air, he is dissolved. If he is burnt, he is lost. And if he dies, as we say, naturally, in any other way, he, in Greece, they bury him. The Bible talks about burial. When Stephen died, they buried him. And there was a great lamentation for him. This, of course, doesn't mean that it's not possible for us to burn a body, to cremate it. And here there are two opinions on this in Christian communities or doctrines. One is that we must be exactly what the Bible says in our actions, which I will agree, we must be exactly not forgetful listeners, but doers of the word, word of God. And because it talks about burial, in general, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, God, it's good for us to do this also. However, I don't believe that the burning of a body, the cremation of a body, of a dead body, corpse, that it is a sin. I don't see that anywhere in the Bible, nor I see it as a transgression. Again, it's a, it's a matter of conscience. I've got nothing else to add to this. And in this position, I would like to know other opinions and views from friends, viewers who are seeing this program. Send us, please, your views on this so we can have some kind of discussion on this and whatever other matter you'd like to discuss. Here, my beloved friends, our time is up. Again, we shall be together next Tuesday with the grace of Christ. Until then, I hope every blessing comes your way in the heavens and also on earth from our Father in heaven. May God be with you all.